Hey guys, Jared here, Magnetic Men's Club. I hope you're all having an amazing day. Today's video, I figured I would talk about some of the first jobs I had growing up. It was all farm work, believe it or not. I still live, for the most part, up in an area of New York. Now, I know a few guys are not from New York and you're not familiar with the state of New York. When you hear New York, everybody thinks of the city. The city is such a small part of New York, but everybody thinks about the city. I'm actually closer to Canada than I am to New York City. Most of New York State is agricultural. I don't know what number, I think it's the seventh largest agricultural state we have. And when I was growing up, my mom worked at the local hospital and my dad was a firefighter for a nuclear power plant about an hour away so he wasn't around a lot because of his shifts but as we got a little older but we weren't old enough to stay on our on our, on our own summer vacations my mom used to drop us off along with a couple of her high school friends kids to a local farm fisher's farm or searle's farm and i'm talking like eight nine years old i remember doing things on a farm whether it was shoveling manure whether it was feeding the cows whether it was making sure the cows had water we weren't strong enough and big enough yet for hay to move bales of hay but we had, there was always something to do on a farm. To me, I thought this was normal. I thought when you're that age, <clears throat> go get a job. And of course I have kids now who are 23 and 20 and of course they have jobs now, but when they were eight, nine, 10, you wouldn't think about, they wouldn't even think about having a job. They you know, probably laughed at me even when I told them back then I was, I've literally started working when I was nine years old. I can back this up. There's pictures of me on a farm at that age. I always thought that that's just what men do. do. You know, you, you go to a farm, you work. I felt great, even though I couldn't do a lot because I was small and my friends are small. The owners of the, or the farmers, the owners of the farm, they they, they allowed you to make mistakes, but they also allowed you to kind of grow into the role they knew you could. So for instance, I remember picking up and shoveling cow manure out of the stalls. And then we'd put it into like this big pile and then a, an older kid, 14 or 15, would actually use a bobcat and pick up a big pile of it and put it in the spreader so it would go out in the fields, um, you know, the next day or whenever it was full. But I always felt amazing just being that little kid and just seeing what I could do. Just what my little hands could do. And, and even though they weren't much at that time, it was, it was just cool to me. And as I got older, I stuck with farm life. I actually wanted to always wanted to be a farmer. And I stuck with it, and I got stronger, of course, and we started doing bales of hay and different things. And I learned a lot on the farm. I learned you can't rush the process. There's certain seasons that you must plant your crops. And in other seasons, if you plant the same crop, it'll die. So there's certain times that you can only plant things I learned patience. I learned that if you're supposed to be there at four o'clock in the morning to turn to get the the cows out to the pasture and you don't do it, they sit there. So they depend on you. I learned that there's other animals and people that depend on you. Even though I was small, even though I was eight, nine, ten years old. That was my job. They expected me to do it. And if I was late, then those cows wouldn't go out. The responsibility, I just felt 
really felt like a man. I felt like, um, even though I was a kid, I felt like I was really important. My other friends that I used to play with in the street when we got back from the farm, it was only like a few days a week. It wasn't every day. It was like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday type thing. So Tuesday and Thursday and the weekends, I'd be in my neighborhood and we're playing with the other kids, my other friends. And I just felt different to a degree. I felt like, man, I have a job. These kids, these are just kids. These, these are, these are kids. Like I, I'm a man. I, I I work on a farm. Fast forward a couple years, I still always stayed on um, Searle's farm, and then I started working at a, a a feed mill. And the reason why I chose the feed mill is I already knew all the feed. I already knew. Um, what the farmers were looking for, what the weekend farmers were looking for at the, at the mill. I already had that knowledge at a very young age. Mr. Lee recognized that. I mean, he was like, this is not normal for somebody this young to know this much about farming because the farmer's kids couldn't work at the, the, the mill. The farmer's kids had to work on the farm. And so I split my time between this farm and the mill and so I got to interact with the public, where in farming you don't really interact with the public as much, you just interact with cows or whatever it is you're farming. And so I got the best of both worlds. I appreciate the beauty and the dedication and the love and the hard work. Farmers are by far the hardest working people in America or in the world, by far they do not stop working because they can't. With the feed mill, I was able to use that knowledge, learn as I go, but I was able to learn this knowledge as older men would ask me about they wanted this particular thing for a horse, and I would say, no, it's got too much molasses in it, and you can't give the horse that much molasses in this feed, try this feed. And they were just blown away, they're like, what? And I, I explained why, and they're like, how old are you? I'm like, at the time I was like 12 or 13, maybe 14. And I just felt like an adult, like I was grown up. I'm talking to grown men, giving them advice on maybe their livestock, or they were looking to start something, or like maybe starting to grow crops. And they didn't know you can't grow strawberries in the winter. Unless you have a greenhouse, of course. There's certain times, there's certain seasons to grow things. And so... I guess the part of this video is there's always a certain time, there's a certain season in your life to grow something or to start something and not to rush that process and to learn by loving that process. And it might take a while for you to start to see the budding and you start to see the fruits of your labor. And I'm so glad I learned that early on because when I went into the military, I got to meet so many amazing men and women all over the world. But I had that knowledge and I had that understanding that all good things, all great things are hard and they take time, they take dedication, they take fortitude. And yes, they do take sweat. And being, a, I, I remember bailing hay in the summertime when it's already 90 degrees up here and you're just sweating and I'm still a little guy and I'm still trying to take these 75 pound bales of hay and get them stacked and I learned to use my body the way I had to in order to get the job done and I took all of this knowledge all of this information and I was able to apply it into the military and realize yeah nothing is free just like in farming just like working in the feed mills all of this knowledge comes at a cost I'm 49 years old. I have three blown discs. I'm sure <laughs> working at a farm at that, at being that small probably didn't help. But the knowledge I gained, the wisdom I gained at such a young age, understanding that everything that you want in your life, there's a cost for it. It's called opportunity cost. We won't get into that, but there's always going to be a cost. And you have to be willing to sacrifice some something else for something else. You can't have it all.
And that's what farming taught me. That's why I wanted to do a message on this as being that young and just learning this that so much and transforming that into the military. And when other guys on my team were going through our pipeline were feeling so self-defeated and they had that I want to quit attitude, I was able to kick up and, and look at them and say, hey man, what else are you going to do? Like, we're so close. If you go back and you quit, you start back at zero. Like, you're so close. It's like when you farm. As soon as you plant the crop, you're closer to growing that that thing, whatever it is you're, you're growing, than you were the day before. You just have to have that patience. You have to have the nutrients and give it the water and make sure it, it has a fighting chance to survive. You can't just drop it and that's the end of it. No farmer does that. You know, I'm 49 and I continue to do this channel. I continue to coach people. I have a couple other companies and even my kids are like, Dad, you know, you could retire. You, you know, you do have the, the money to retire. You don't have to work so hard. And I remind them, like, at, from the time I was eight years old, this is all I've done. Work. This is all I know. This is all I loved. There hasn't been a job that I've taken that I didn't do my absolute best. But I didn't. I also loved every single one of my jobs, except for one that's for another video. But I loved everything I did. And so I invite you, if you're struggling in your life right now, if maybe you're starting over, you're trying to figure out what the next thing that you can grow for yourself so that you can have something, something more for you, click the link down below. At least come to our Facebook group. See what the other like-minded men and women, how they interact with us, the posts that I create, check out my channel. It's wildly across the board because I don't want to fit in one specific genre, even though it's probably not good for the algorithm. I want to help men understand that anything worthwhile in life is going to take cost. It's going to take dedication. It's going to take time, but it will be worth it. My name is Jared Schoemaker. This is the Magnetic Men Club. If you like videos like this, if you found this content helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel. Hit the like button. Hit that bell icon so that you know when new videos are being dropped. With that, have an amazing day. And of course, we'll talk soon. Bye.